All right, guys, I watched it. The Force Awakens, the biggest movie ever. Like, big. Like, how do you even review something like this? How do you even talk about something like this without giving away spoilers? This is the most hyped movie ever. I don't think The Return of Jesus is as hyped as this movie has been. And you have to deal with that when you're going into this movie. There is just too much hype for it. And that works on some levels because people are going to go see it. And that doesn't work on some levels because people are going to be disappointed because they're promised this is the best thing ever. So, you know, it's hard. It's hard with movies like this to manage your expectations. And I did my best. I mean, the last few days I've been, like, rationing my internet because I was so scared of spoilers. And, well, fucks. I got something really important spoiled for me anyway, although I saw it coming, so I guess that didn't matter. So, okay, I'm gonna do this as simply as I can. I have three cards. Good. Bad. I don't know. And I'm going to talk about them each separately. Okay, first off, the acting in this is so good. I was worried about the acting in this because there's a lot of new people who I haven't seen them do jack shit. So, you know, right there is kind of a trust issue. I'm not sure if they're going to do it or not. You have the old cast who, you know, they could treat this like a paycheck. There's no reason that they have to show up and give their A game. This is Star Wars. Everyone knows you're going to go see it. They might have just come in for a paycheck. I don't think they did. I think they did the best they could. And it's good. It's really good. Everyone in this is really good. I loved all of them. And, you know, that was one, that was probably the thing I was most worried about. Was like, oh, well, you know, some of these people I don't know, some of these people kind of old, kind of off their game. But no, it all worked. And it all worked, especially with the characters. These are characters that I fell in love with immediately. I mean, Harrison Ford, I'm going to start there. He's kind of the, you know, teacher in this. He's kind of the older, I'm going to show you into the world type that Obi-Wan was in the first one. So, you know, he does a good job with this. This is Han Solo. This feels like Han Solo. This feels like a more world-weary Han Solo. He's not the same as he was in the original trilogy, but I can see how that character from the original trilogy grew into the man he is in Force Awakens. I really enjoyed him in this. The other two, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill, well, honestly, there's not that much of them, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Now, I'm going to dive into the next generation. Star Trek reference. Why not? Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, trekking, trekking along, fighting, boom, whatever. That was weird. Anyway, Daisy Ridley and John Boyega play Ray and Finn who don't get last names, and also everyone's name is one syllable in this, and I don't know why. Not important, just thought it was weird. But anyway, Daisy Ridley and John Boyega were my two favorite. I can't say who I liked better. Daisy Ridley definitely had more of the dramatic aspect. She was intense. Her character was badass when she needed to be, because she needed to be badass a lot. I'll get to that in a little bit. And she was dramatic, and I really felt for her. She grew up in a harsh place, and she's dealing with some issues. She, you know, she is suddenly thrust into this world, this giant galaxy, and it's kind of hard for her to grasp. And Daisy Ridley does a really good job emoting that. She was great in this. I really loved her. Then there's John Boyega as Finn. Now, Daisy Ridley was really the dramatic one. John Boyega is the fun one. He is hilarious. I loved his character. He did such a great job. He was, he was the most likable for me. Like, he's kind of, he's also, just like Daisy Ridley, he's suddenly thrust into this position, and he's going around, and half the time he's just like, oh, fuck, I have no idea what I'm doing, and half the time he's being a badass, which made me really connect to him, and also think he was really cool. I loved him in this I, I don't think either of them stole the show. I loved both characters equally. And then there's Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron. Now, he's not, he doesn't get, like, a lot of screen time. But when he's on screen, he's awesome. 
He is amazing. He is the Rebels, like, number one ace pilot. And he is just so badass. I loved him. He was just so cool. Like, he was the coolest character I have ever seen in, like, a sci-fi movie. He was just smooth. I mean, he wasn't cocky about it. He was just like, yeah, I'm busy being a badass. What do you need? He was just so cool about everything. And I loved his character. And I, I can't wait to see more of him. He was so cool. And then there's the chemistry. The chemistry between all of them is awesome. I love the chemistry between John Boyega and Oscar Isaac. There's a scene very early on with both of them where they have to kind of team up. And it was my favorite scene in the movie. I really loved it. It was everything Star Wars. It was fun. It was cool. It was blowing shit up. It was just awesome. I loved the chemistry between them. John Boyega and Daisy Ridley. The chemistry was good there. And then there's the chemistry between all of them and the villain, Kylo Ren. And I thought that was also very good. Kylo Ren, he is played by Adam Driver, who I think did a very good job. And I will get to why maybe some people might not like Kylo Ren so much later, but he did a very good job. He's kind of a conflicted character, and he did a good job with that. He did a good job portraying the, like, badass guy, too. Like, I really liked everyone, all the characters, all the acting. I loved it all. What else is good? The sci-fi. The special effects. You need special effects in Star Wars, and it's amazing. Most of it is practical effects. There's not that much CGI. Yes, when there is CGI in this, it's kind of painfully obvious. It's like that one scene in Mad Max where, you know, everything's real, and then there's that one CGI scene, and it's like, wow, that's obvious. But the special effects, for the most part, like 95% of it is just amazing. It's so great. The action. Oh my god. There is a lightsaber fight at the end, because it's Star Wars. I mean, you have lightsabers. Hell yeah, you're going to put them into a movie. And it is visceral. These guys are going after each other. Like, that's not even a fucking lightsaber. They're, like, hacking at each other like they have a wood axe or something. They are just trying to murder each other. And it is visceral. It is intense. It is dramatic. It is emotional. And I loved every moment of it. <coughs> The lightsaber fight in this was amazing. The, there's not, well, there's actually a good bit of it. There's not, like, star fights that much. It's all, like, fighting in atmosphere. But the dog fights in this, the fights with the TIE fighters and the X-Wings was amazing. There's this one long continuous take, and I know it's CGI. That's not like a real X-Wing there. So it's not that hard to do a long take. But... There was this one with Poe, and he's just busy being a badass, and it was just amazing. There's so much in this that is amazing. The comedy's amazing. I think this is the funniest Star Wars film I've ever seen. This The comedy worked for me, too. I was chuckling a good bit in this. I don't think there was any real moment where I was just laughing my ass off, but this movie had me chuckling a lot. So that is the good stuff, and it's really good. But there's some bad stuff. None of it's really that bad. The stuff that a lot of people are going to be disappointed with, I think, is more divisive than necessarily bad. But, like, the pacing is really fast, I felt like. It definitely seemed to me like there were at least three or four scenes where they could have slowed it down a bit and kind of explored, you know, these characters more, explored these situations more. It wasn't bad. It was just a little quicker than I wanted. I thought if they had just slowed it down, you know, if... This movie had added, say, 10 minutes. I think there would have been a lot more there that I would have hooked on to. Not that there wasn't stuff I didn't hook on to. Like I said, I loved all the characters. That's, I mean, I'm going to say that again. All these characters are amazing. And you will connect with them. But back to the bad. Oh my god, usually I can focus on the bad for days. But this, I don't know. See, it's Star Wars. It's good. We love it. We love Star Wars. We always want more Star Wars. Now... Okay, so more bad. Sorry. The Millennium Falcon was the only thing in this movie that really took me completely out. Like, well, that and one other thing that I'll get to later. But the Millennium Falcon in this, is it made of adamantium? This thing is just bouncing off cliffs, trees, whatever the fuck it feels like. And it just keeps going. It just... That was... That was probably the worst part of the movie to me, personally, was that the Millennium Falcon suddenly is invincible. It is 
bouncing off shit like a pinball. And it doesn't seem to affect it at all. And that was just, ugh. Like, in the original trilogy, the Millennium Falcon is always falling apart, and that's when it's just cruising along. And now in this, it's bouncing off of shit and working perfectly all the time. Ugh. Sorry. That one just bugged me. There's a new giant base, and, okay, I have to say this right out of the gate. The Death Star is the dumbest idea by man. It's, why would you have a Death Star? Would you, you have nuclear fusion, right? Nuclear fission. Yeah, fission, not fusion. So, I mean, nuclear bombs, you could make thousands of them and render entire planets completely uninhabitable, which is basically the same as destroying them, right? So why do you need a damn Death Star? These damn Death Stars are stupid! They're fucking dumb! Get rid of them! I don't need giant fucking planets that shoot at other planets in my Star Wars. It's... I mean, even for Star Wars, that just feels dumb, still. Sorry. I just have always felt that way about the damn Death Star. It's a dumb idea. And, okay, the last straight-up bad thing I'm going to say is this movie was fairly predictable. Like I said, I only had one thing spoiled for me before going into this, but I was still able to guess most of what was going to happen. It was still very fun, but... I was able to guess a lot. So, there's three things I have to talk about that I don't know how people are going to feel about them. And I'm sort of torn up about all these three things. So, number one is Kylo Ren, the main bad guy. Now, if you go into this and you are expecting the next Darth Vader to just kill you as soon as look at you, just badass, intimidating dude... You're going to be disappointed. This guy, he's kind of conflicted. He's a more flesh out character. I really liked him, but I could see a lot of people being sort of disappointed. This guy, you know, he is not the straight up badass that Darth Vader was. He is not as powerful as Darth Vader was, which makes sense. And he's just not as evil as Darth Vader was. So if you're expecting Darth Vader, you will be disappointed. So you got to manage that expectation. Fan service in this. If you want a lot of fan service, boy, you're going to get that. To me, there were a lot of times in this where I was like, wow, that is something I saw, like, almost beat for beat in the original trilogy. That is something I saw beat for beat. It's, like, exactly the same. And it took me out sometimes. There's not a lot of moments, but there are some moments where I was like, okay, come on. You don't need to be that on the nose about it. I, if you want a lot of fan service, then you won't be disappointed. But if you kind of want this just to be the next Star Wars, there are going to be moments that take you out of the film. And the last thing is, this is a cliffhanger ending. I'm not going to give it away, but this ending, I mean, this film raises a lot of questions, and it doesn't answer that many of them. So, you know, if you want a nice little Christmas present with a little bow on top and all the answers you ever wanted, you're going to be disappointed. This movie raises way more questions than it answers. You know, you need to go see the second one when it comes out. And if that's going to disappoint you, you got to be able to expect that. So what would I rate it? Honestly, I have no idea. I thought about this. I, I saw this yesterday and I was like, you know what? I don't know what to rate this. I need to sleep on it. I need a day to sort of just think about it. And I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought the rating is really irrelevant and it's going to be misleading to people. There is a lot of good in this. This is good Star Wars. This is Star Wars. It's amazing. <coughs> JJ really brought his A game, you could tell. And this is very good. But there are going to be things that some people feel disappointed with. And it goes back to hype. This film is the most hyped thing ever. So, you have to manage your expectations. There's things that you will feel kind of one way and another way about. There's, it's not a film that is as good as Empire Strikes Back. It's a good film, but it will be divisive. And you need to kind of manage your expectations. You need to sit there and you need to think about it before you go into the theater and make sure you have an open mind. I'm not going to rate this... 
there's good stuff there. I really feel like people will find something to enjoy about this film. Everyone will find something to enjoy about this film, especially the characters. And we have to wait till episode eight. I Until I see how this cliffhanger ending goes into episode eight, I can't rate this. Because this movie, it's like Lord of the Rings. You know, if you just have the Fellowship of the Rings, it's not satisfying because you don't see the end. And so this movie, it leaves a big cliffhanger. And I can't wait for the next one, but I'm also still kind of worried. All right, so that was my review. Oh, by the way, the Stormtroopers are still incompetent. They're a little bit better, but they're still fucking incompetent. All right, guys, watch Force Awakens. Bye-bye.